right before we walked into the studio, L. Duncan shockingly says, huh, I forgot to put my clothes on for the show. Oh, that must be nice, L, because the last time that happened to me, I got sent to HR. Only thing that's happening to you, well, is nothing. The privilege can't set strikes again. Way. He sets it up with just like a solo shot on him saying, Elle's not wearing clothes. And then they cut to me, and I'm clearly wearing an Amazon sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to say I as much. Marshalls. It's not cute. Like, you really, you got the three or four people that are listening and are only here for my whoa, looks. Whoa. I said just the people that are listening that are here for my okay, looks. Sure. We have an evolved crowd. Mm -hmm, They're real do. rabid sports fans. They are. They're here for insight. Yeah. Yes. They're here for insight, analysis. And if you are, then let me recommend you go to the Dominique Foxworth show or the <laughs> Mina Kime show. This is not that show. <laughs> Tricked you. Yeah. Surprise. Sorry, guys. We're going to say glizzies at least 30 to 40 times in this yes, show. Yes, definitely. There's the first of uh, many. Yeah, I mentioned Dominique Foxworth. We yep. are less than a week away from the NFL draft, Come one on. week away from the NFL draft, and we figured that we would bring in an expert. Sure. I love Dominique Foxworth because he was a former Bronco. Come on. My beloved Broncos. No, don't stake claim to the Broncos now. We all know you're a Patriots fan. Well, you're I mean, a traitor. You're a hater. You're I a Benedict recall Arnold. Fox's time in mm -hmm. Denver because I was but an impressionable high schooler. Yeah. You know? Sure. And what and that you're secondary was nasty. It was really good. Yeah. And what you're going to experience for a lot of these old heads, these NFL heads, these uh -huh. formers, is them sort of reliving their draft experience. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to help Dominique Foxworth relive yep. his draft experience as let's bring him in right now. And Fox, we want to, first of all, thanks for being there on the There he is. Host of the Dominique Foxworth show with the Alabaster King, Charlie Kravitz. We love Charlie. Yes. Um, we wanted to help relive your draft experience, but then when we pulled the tape, well, this was Dominic Foxworth's draft experience. Let's remind the people. Uh -oh. All right, Blackstock, we talked about. Brandon Jones, wide receiver, Oklahoma, we talked about Tennessee. Now, Dominic Foxworth, corner Maryland, goes to Denver. So another defensive back for the Broncos. So. Hey, short and sweet, baby. So he was a full screen. He was a mention as a and a also. Mention, by Berman. Yeah, by uh, He was a mention by Berman. <laughs> and then they went on to show Dustin Colquitt, but you couldn't even get your own headshot and full screen. So here's That's what we want. That's crazy. Yeah, do you remember this happening in real time, Fox? I mean, I don't want to. First of all, I am happy to be here. Thanks for having me. And it's nice to be on another podcast that is beautifully shot. Like I'm sick of these, <laughs> right? these trash podcasts that we go to. They don't have any personal pride or self-respect where Thank everything or is lighting. a hazy look up nostrils. Yeah. Like, I respect this podcast because this podcast is about looking good just like mine. So Hell thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, it is an actual beautiful set. that you And I don't on. want to... I don't want to take any shots at your crack research team. I love them and I know them, but that seemed like a recap of the draft. That wasn't when I was drafted. When I actually was drafted, I didn't get that much love, but like there was an actual moment where the bell rang and my name came up across the bottom and they showed some highlights or like it actually did. That thing happened. That was just going down the Broncos draft, right? They well, were going through. Know, they were Fox, oh, never already, let the truth get in the way of a good story. We're Fox. Have to double back. You know, there were some red flags that popped up for me when I saw that because there was a couple, uh, there's a little bit of math that wasn't math in third round pick, yeah. top 100, power five school. I was like, yeah. certainly we got, I know it's 2005 yeah. and technology and video has come a long way, but I was like, certainly there's video of Fox being that dog yeah. in the secondary was, there in Maryland. Scary. So yeah, okay. Okay, well, in the, we'll inter in the interest of just, you know, going with this bit, because we didn't research it particularly well, we warned you coming in. <laughs> yeah, we don't true. research, we don't do anything. We nah. wanted to give you your own updated draft profile mm -hmm. because, of course, you took like that third it. round pick, you turned it into a very lucrative career. Thank you for your service for the Denver Broncos, of course, the yeah. Ravens as well. Mm -hmm. He was out there winning them things. He was heading up the NFLPA. This guy's mm -hmm. a genius. So we did um, have a profile for you guys. We'll pop that up right now. Fox's draft profile. There he is. Aww. Does 200 push-ups a day? Okay. Oh, his, I do. I do. <laughs> wow. His 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 instant messenger screen name was NFL oh, Bound gosh. 36. Where did the 36 come from, Fox? So I did. I ended high school early and went to college uh, the second half of my senior year. And so the first number they gave me during spring ball was number 36. Ah. So that. And I and I first got my AIM account at the same time. But fortunately, 
Uh, I, they had enough respect for me to give me a respectable number before the season actually started when I switched to six. But, yeah, that's how I got 36. Um, I did see one red flag on Uh-oh. your draft profile Uh-oh. that you have a cat ooh, named <laughs> Lamar <laughs> after Jackson or just – yeah, so we okay. had a um, the as you you know I got kids and yeah. which means that I don't make decisions like what type of pet we get or what name. Mm. All I do is clean up all the cat yeah. and occasional oh. throw ups. Like I'm a janitor here. So yeah, yeah, my son, the the everyone gave him a name. Both of the girls and my son, and my son's name ended up being the one that stuck. So it was just we called them all by all the names that he had for the first couple of days. But we all eventually just realized we're looking at a Lamar. And so he became Lamar. Yeah, you said with cats, the picking up of the poop is at least in a concentrated area, yeah. mm. uh, which is the litter box. I think if, if the cat is catting properly, um, unlike, yeah. unlike what a dog would be. So that's good. Hey, Fox, do you do 200 consecutive push-ups or do we take a break, 50 intervals? Because oh, nah. nah. Oh, for real? We got to take breaks. We okay. got to take breaks. What are we doing? Yeah. I so I'm, well, I'm I mean, just saying, I get, yeah. you still look in playing shape. You know what I'm saying? Like, you still uh, look like the part of draft the, weight. It, I, sh- so, I should have warned yeah. you, Fox. This is the part of the podcast where Gary's just going to flirt with dudes because well, Gary's down. all in on the guys. Down, man. I just, flirt on. Can you show the people at home a little of those chesticles, please? <laughs> can we see your chesticles? The chartreuse shirt is just doing wonders for you. It's accentuating, you know, what you got oh, there God. greatly. So we're good. All I mean, right. Yeah. I feel like anytime push ups come up, it's just a reason for men to get a chance to show off their push-ups, but we won't allow it to happen. But I, I honestly, I thought what Gary was doing was lining up a chance to show y'all how many push-ups he could do. But I know, L, you wouldn't stand for that type of mm-hmm. foolishness. Never. It's Not on this. I don't like that chicanery on this show. This is serious. <laughs> Thank you. Which is why, uh, Fox, we want to do a co-sign or cap with you, yes. NFL Draft Edition. I'll basically oh. give you a statement. All right. All right. You either co-sign that statement or you say, no, nah, man, that's cap. And the first one is, dude, the first time on the clock should not have 10 minutes to make their pick because they've been sitting on it for months. Why are we waiting for you? Do you co-sign this or is that cap? <laughs> Absolutely 100% co-sign it. I don't know. I mean, I guess you understand TV much better than me. Is that Porsche? I mean, there's a lot of setup. No, they do all the setup the and then yeah. they start the clock. Right. Yeah, I don't know. You're, you're right. There, We could tighten it up a little bit. That would just, be fair. Just we should kick it off with the first pick. Correct. Like, could you imagine? Just like, out of the gate. Yeah, gates? right away. It's like in the intro. It would get it would get asses in seats a lot quicker. Yes. Like, you know when the Braves last year were hitting home runs, like at a historic clip in the first inning, it yeah. forced everybody to get to the ballpark sure. earlier. If Goodell opened up, welcome to the draft, your first pick, boom. That actually would get eyeballs on the program a lot quicker. But the NFL has no problem drawing eyeballs to the product anyway. So, you know, they want to. Fill that thing with some commercials, so yeah. that's good. But I think yeah, we especially all... when it's especially when it's not. There's no suspense around the pick like this yeah, that's year. True. There's no suspense around the pick, so uh, we need to get to the suspenseful picks as quickly as we possibly can. And the trades that are coming, but we know the Bears have made it quite clear they're going Caleb. So yeah, move it up. Yo, imagine we get you. some absolute haymaker though to start this draft out of freaking nowhere, like yeah. an unprecedented move. The Chicago Bears have traded down or try to trade it up which actually fox leads us to the next one trading down in the draft is lame cosine or cap and i think based off of what we've seen in recent trade down scenarios we might know where this one's going <sighs> trading down meaning getting a higher pick getting a higher pick yeah yeah yeah. okay i i i would say that that is cap I Ooh. mean, yeah, I, 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 I'm not. So the idea of you trading down uh, in order to get or up in the draft to get a higher pick to get a quarterback is a mistake. So it's just mm. it feels to me like that never really works out well for any team. I mean, at the end of the draft when you're doing oh, it for oh, Trey Lance, <laughs> Trey Lance. But look what the Dolphins turn that into, right? So yeah, it's Jaylen it's Waddle. cosine for somebody, but cap for yeah. somebody else, right? Like mm-hmm. there's two coins, two sides of this coin for sure. Yeah, I I don't want to do it. I don't want my team doing it, even though the Ravens did it to get Lamar Jackson. It's the end of the draft. I think yeah, um, the Chiefs also were was a trade up technically. I think right for Patrick yeah. Mahomes. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't like the big overhaul trade ups to like top five. And right now in my mind, the teams that are thinking about doing that are like the Giants and the Vikings, maybe the Vikings, but the Giants don't do the same dumb. 
you just did last time where you right. brought a quarterback into a bad situation and then things got worse. And we don't really know, like not Daniel Jones is not a world beater, but we're not sure how good he can be. You're going to do it to another poor, unsuspecting uh, quarterback prospect. Please don't. Torpedoing the entirety of your future first round selections is like selling the farm, right, for Major League Baseball, like uh, franchises who, you know, freaking trade every single prospect they have to trade up for what is at best an unknown. Yeah, that's it's super, not an exact science, so and we've certainly proven that, that's which so is scary. why the next one is interesting to me because there's been some debate. CJ Stroud says that his former teammate Marvin Harrison Jr. should be the first wide receiver taken in this draft. You co-sign that, or is that Cap? Co-sign. Yeah. Co-sign uh, that like somebody who needs a car has got good credit. <laughs> yeah, sure. I can't. Yeah, I can't co-sign that hard enough. Like I've, I've made the argument that we do focus a lot on quarterbacks, and it's not necessarily smart. I think that there are players who can have impacts close to as um, large as a quarterback on a team. I think back to like Randy Moss dropped on to the Vikings, and they went 15 and one when he showed up. J.J. Watt was similar. Von Miller had a similar impact. There are players who can change the fortunes of your team because of the sheer level of their impact. And it makes job for the it makes the job for the quarterback a lot easier too. And I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is clearly that good <laughs> to me, and he is by far. Well, I wouldn't say by far, but is decidedly the best receiver in this draft. So, and best player <laughs> in this draft, including the quarterbacks. Honestly, also the underlying like awkwardness if like your homie who you went and played college ball with was like, yeah, Marvin Harrison's good, but like that Malik Neighbors. Yeah. Me, I wish really he, like Roma Dunze. I wish he was in Columbus <laughs> with me because Marvin Harrison is just whatever. <laughs> I, I love this question for Fox because he's so high level. Like he mm. he is understands football in a way that probably makes him sick sometimes when he watches what sure. we put on and it's always just treetops. Let's talk about the Cowboys. Drafting an offensive guard is as sexy as wearing oh. socks with sandals at a beach party. Do you co-sign this, or is that cap? Um, I co-sign it. Yeah. Uh, wow. Socks and sandals, not sexy. I mean, I think I could pull it off. But um, drafting a guard... I can't pull that off. There's nobody, there's no level of sexy that can make that cool. I'm sorry. I know you need them. But if you're going to draft the of offensive lineman, draft one of the impactful ones, which is a tackle. Sorry, <laughs> offensive guards. I know you have value. But, like, guard is the last place you end up. That's like the, the, the bin for people who aren't, who aren't big enough to play tackle. Man, and it's the who, lost and found for offensive linemen. That's crazy. It, it kind of is. Like it, and if you aren't explosive enough to play defensive line, they send you over to the offensive line. And then they're like, oh, but you're not, your arms aren't long enough to, to <laughs> box with these pass rushes. Slide your ass inside, and they won't even let you be center, where at least you can call out the protections. <laughs> you have some level of responsibility. Guard is the last spot. It's the last spot. Maybe running back is lower than guard. <laughs> so you only threw up in your mouth a little bit when, when the Chiefs took Eric Fisher a decade ago first <laughs> overall, right? Like, not quite a guard. They did take him a tackle, but you were like, this is not sexy. Ugh. But wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it it could be worse. Well, I mean, I don't want to yuck anybody's yums. Maybe okay. somebody out there is into offensive guards being drafted high, but hey man, that don't do it for me. Exactly. Too. Listen, some people think infrastructure is sexy, okay? Some it people's is. dirty talk is suspension bridges. I'm saying. And rotaries. Like, it's important. And also, let me throw this out there as well, okay? Mm -hmm. Wearing socks with sandals to a beach party, not sexy, but if your feet are atrocious, yeah. you are saving the party by putting them bad boys away. I'm a big proponent, Fox, about men not showing their feet ever unless they're walking physically into a body of water. And so I'm a big thing. fan of this. You will ruin the party if you expose those toes. Fox, it's the funniest thing that Elle ever said. Like 10 years ago when I first met here, I don't know how we got on this tangent about exposed feet, like in those thong sandals that go in between your big toe oh my God. and the yeah. rest of the four. But Elle was like, the only time I should ever be seeing your feet, this includes my soon-to-be husband, is if he is walking his ass into a body of water right. to cover those damn feet right. up. I was like, all right, Elle, I, don't I thought need we were to see talking your about feet. <laughs> feet are ugly in general. Men don't paint their toes. I got nice feet. Typically, they are hairy. I, even a nice man's foot is ugly, and I stand on this. Like, put your <laughs> toes away, especially at work. I got into an elevator. There was like oh. six dudes all with thong sandals on. It's like so inappropriate. Oh. You were on a cruise. What were they supposed to do? <laughs> Hell, damn. <laughs> I think it's more awkward if you're like in a tropical situation and dudes are wearing closed toes. Anything. That's that's weird.
It's more yeah, weird. I mean, you got. I'm with L generally, but there are certain situations where you have to endure the feet. I, I, I mean, especially as an athlete in locker room, I've I'm seen saying, lots of oh really God. terrible feet. But um, yeah, if you, if you're going to a pool party or you're going to a tropical location, I have to say that there's some gross things that you have to be comfortable with seeing, and you're gonna have to see some bodies that you don't <laughs> like. I'm sorry. I'm Go. sorry. There gonna be some body parts that are exposed that that shouldn't be exposed. It's fair. It just comes with the territory. Turks and Caicos and, and Omar's in some butters. Yeah. He's in some Timberlands. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's wearing Cole Hans. <laughs> All right. Lastly, and I think this is a good one. Your nickname is either Dom or Neek, Cosign or Cap. Ooh. Oh, that's Cap. Thank you. That's Cap. It's Cap. Like, it's clear. Like, I don't look like a Dom. I've never been called Dom until, like, my mid-30s, the first time anyone's ever called me Dom. I don't know why. Maybe it's just I grew up around mostly black people, and they just happen to have a strain of creativity where they're like, no, that first syllable, we skipping that. We don't need that second <laughs> syllable either. We going to the cool one, yeah. the only cool syllable. Like, Dom, Mo, not cool. Neek, though? That's a cooler, like, sound. So that's the one that I went with. And then it was so weird to me at business school. I mean, in my 30s, the first time anyone was like, hey, Dom. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't see any fat Italian people anywhere <laughs> around here. Like, I'm not a Dom. Get out of here. But people still call me Dom. It's just a, I get it. It's like a reflex. It's like the first syllable, but it's, it still doesn't sit right for me. I'm 41, and I still am not gotten comfortable with it. I have a, a cousin who calls me Domo, which... Like oh, that Domo's works kind too. Of, that's that's better. kind of endearing. Yeah. yeah. Almost that's, a little bit I like different. It. I I knew and Fox knew that I was a real one and loved him yeah. from his oh, services yeah. with the Broncos because I know that his nickname is Fox. Yeah, that I mean that's there the safest Fox. one too. Like it's always been Fox. Yeah, but even like people here will be like, Oh, you want me to hit up Neek and see? I'm like, who the f Neek? It's Fox. <laughs> it's Fox. It's I didn't uh, know that I, the first two were options, to be honest with you. It's Fox. Yeah. The um the Again, the business school thing, they asked you, like, you have a nickname, and I said Fox. They all thought it was funny. They were going to call you Fox. I was like, all right, fine. Don't call me Fox. I, don't, I mean, I don't care. Call me whatever the hell you want, the I guess. Bleachers. It's like, what Dumb. up, Worth? <laughs> what up, Worth? <laughs> yeah. What? Just trying to be like, different. <laughs> listen, he, what did the Fox say? He said his nickname's Fox. But That's right. We're coming back talking Good dynasties man. after this. Hey, The Yale Duncan Show. New episodes drop every Monday and Thursday. Make sure to tell somebody about it, please. Spotify, YouTube, and you can watch it on telly. On the telly on Friday. On so the telly. On, on the YouTube. boob. On the boob tube. All right, we're back with Dominique Foxworth. We're going to put a bow on the NFL, and then we're going to shift into the NBA because Fox, of course, has his own show. He can talk about all things. He's a purveyor of sports. But we want to go with, um, you know the, the, the game that you play with, uh, with your kids, categories, right, where you're like, oh, mm -hmm. colors. And everybody has to rapid fire yep. name colors till someone F's up. All right, we're going to do that with the NFL draft, and we're yes. going to do it with NFL draft cliches. All yes. right, Fox, you're going to start. I'll go next, and then Gary, and we'll keep doing this until somebody messes up. Ready, set, go. High ceiling player. Oh, that's good. He's a game changer. Oh, real cerebral, real student of the game. He's got a motor. Oh, he, Natural athlete. He does have coach's kid. He's coachable. He's a coach's kid. Uh, lunch pail guy. Oh. Perfect fit for this team. That's good lunch. He's a hard hat guy. First one in, last one out. Um, slid down the board. Really high ceiling, low. Oh, did I? We have a high ceiling. Did it? You better get another one. No, I left. I left. I left the other one. The opposite. I left the opposite. It's there. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Low he's got, floor. He's got low a low floor. floor. Low floor. I mean, he's a freak. He's a freak in nature. Just physical gifts. He's a gifted athlete. <laughs> Coach's kid. Deceptively fast. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised Fox didn't go here with this one. He's a foxhole guy. He's a guy that you want. Ooh. He's a guy you want in the trenches with you. Got that dog. Oh, that's a new one. He's got a nose for the mm -hmm. ball. He play, He I, plays through the whistle. He plays through the whistle. He's, he plays through the whistle. He runs through the finish. He doesn't run to. He runs through the finish line. Has all the throws. Oh, he makes all the throws. Absolute specimen. <laughs> kind of like a physical freak. He Okay. Uh. Okay. Okay. 
He passes the eye test. Hey, listen, all the measurables, but he passes the eye test. Coach's Someone's, kid. Oh, I said coach's okay. kid. Oh, okay. I said coach's oh. kid. Right. Yeah, he you said, said it. Give another coach one. On coach, coach, coach on the field. Coach on the field. Coach on the field. Coach on the field. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> crap. Okay, I lost. I'm like, ah, oh, what have you guys already said? The uh, hardest part is just remembering what the hell you already said. Uh, IQ guy. High IQ guy. We already did football, that one. Football IQ. Already we already did already football did IQ. It's you over. said IQ? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Football DNA. Yeah. DNA. More letters. Oh, I got one. He's a gym right. rat. You already <laughs> dq yourself. You dq yourself. <laughs> yeah, gym rat. Hey, difference, he, difference maker. He's a difference he maker. He's a difference. <laughs> hey, he can cook by himself. Doesn't need any oil. All right. Well done. There's... <laughs> I'll just be making. I I'll be like, making. I made up like my last couple. I don't it know. All works. No, we, it all works. <laughs> we could tell. Uh, Fox, you are the winner. Fox understood the assignment. He kept it quick and speedy. Gary was like explaining his with three to four sentences. Well, sometimes. Hey, Fox, do you remember some of the handful of ones that the 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 scouts described your game as, and the ones I you were like, wait a minute, what? Whenever we do these cliche things, I'll take you back to when I was in high school getting recruited, and I remember going to uh, a like a, a mini combine, and my dad was standing on the side, and like some college coaches were talking to him, and I was trying to get some attention, or whatever. And then I remember I did all the stuff, whatever. And so when we're driving home, I asked my dad like, "How to go? Did the coaches like what they saw?" He was like, "I really don't like what I heard from them. I think." Um, we may be looking at some other schools because one of the guys he was talking to, I don't even remember what school it was, said that I had great hips. And my dad <laughs> had no idea that it meant like I was a fluid athlete, essentially. That you He's could like, swivel change know. direction? Yeah, yeah. My dad is yeah, a black man who grew up in the 70s. It is like, this it is wasn't a very good you. athlete. And this was, this was our first introduction to it. And like, he's fine with them objectifying like, hey, that guy's fast. That guy's strong. He got great ball skills. These are things that would have made sense to him. Yeah. But at that time, in the mid 90s, I guess it was, <laughs> he was like, this coach said, hey, I really like your son because he got great hips. My dad was befuddled, <laughs> but he knew I was not going there. <laughs> he was like, Fox, I, I, or son, I think they were trying to come yeah. on to you. Yeah. I don't know. He was talking about your hips. He was talking about the way your lower trunk works and moves. <laughs> he, said he was way too fixated on the lower half of your body. He said something about you having a donk. I don't know what that <laughs> means, but I don't like it. He said you got a real I, solid base. <laughs> what you need to know is if they got a donk, they can run. Yeah, got slim yeah. calves and mm -hmm. a high booty. Those people can fly. <laughs> yes. yep. They can fly. It may be uncomfortable if you are scouting uh, high school football players walking around measuring calves and booty height. But That's you got funny. a speed demon on your side if you find one. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've already had the master of all asses on this show, that being Ryan Clark, and that's all that needs oh. to be said about that guy's booty. Yeah, man, the so, front half of his body walks into a room be 10 faster. minutes before. He yeah. should be faster. He should be faster with that yeah. booty. He man, should he, be faster. He's, he's not slow, but he should be faster. Yeah, he's carrying a lot of junk. Um, bag lady, you know what I mean? Uh, all right, speaking of being a lot of baggage, I've got to get your thoughts really quickly. This kind of is the, the crossing of both of your worlds. You love the NBA. You're obviously a former NFL player. I want to know what you think is the sadder into a dynasty what we are witnessing currently with Golden State or what we witnessed with the Patriots and I'll start with Golden State and the Clay Thompson sound where he was basically like I can still play listen the next several weeks going and and, and I mean it's clear like you're, you're you're not necessarily ready to think about the future this moment but like how quickly do you think you're going to have to kind of pivot and, and figure that out. And, and what conversations do you feel like you need to have? Well, considering it's April 17th, I don't think <laughs> I have to pivot that quickly. Uh, when is free agency? July 1st? Yeah. I got, got some time. Got some time. What's up with y'all not wanting to live in the present, bro? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Very okay. zen of him. Yeah, he also, we didn't play that sound, Fox, but he was also, I think you've heard this already, basically like, I can still play. I know it didn't play good tonight, but I still got it in me. I still got some good old days left in me. Of course, he's an impending free agent. And then we know the fall of the Patriots dynasty. It happened really quickly. And now, you know, you got Bill Belichick on the Pat McAfee show, forcing smiles and yucks and chuckling and laughing. And I'm just wondering what you think uh, is the sadder sort of end yeah. to these dynastic so, teams. It's a great question, but it's the easy answer to me. It's obviously the Warriors because the Warriors had players that are actually likable, you know, like, and, and are still around and, 
very clearly core to the dynasty. Uh, of course, maybe not everyone feels sorry for Draymond Green, but we love Clay. No one has anything bad to say about Clay. Mm-hmm. It's sad to see Clay. And Steph, obviously, everyone loves Steph. Steph made me look silly a couple years ago when I thought that their championship run was over <laughs> then and they stole another one oh, two, and he years, clowned man. me in the post game press conference. So that is a dynasty where we have likable people. The other way around is. We don't know anybody for the Patriots because they sent them all, all the good players away before they could get become associated with the dynasty. Anybody other than Belichick, Kraft, and Brady. And Brady snuck out before it got ugly, and no one feels sorry for Bill Belichick or Robert Kraft. So it's got to be the Warriors dynasty that's sadder to watch. Also, the Clay Thompson sound right there was literally the Andy Bernard from the office quote, right? Like, I wish... You knew you were in the good old days before you actually left them. Well, Clay Thompson is sort of having that realization right now, like at 34 years young. It's like, damn, y'all. But there's no there's no good way to end a dynasty. No, correct. Right? Because like, a dynasty is no, only, and then it's over. It's over. It's well. like you you recognize, we, again, we all thought like maybe the dynasty was over and then they snuck that win and the Andrew Wiggins NBA finals, by correct. the way. It really wasn't the big three. It was Andrew Wiggins that showed out. And they got that one over the Celtics. But like there is no good way to, we just, we don't like moving on. Like people in general like holding on to the past and the great feelings. And to Fox's point, they're so likable, the three of them. I mean, together they're likable. Sure. You know, Draymond being a little bit of the outlier. And people just in general want things to end on a high note. You wanted them to win a championship and all walk away into the sunset and ride on a banana boat somewhere. But that's just not how it works. Name a dynasty that ended in like a super positive way. They never do. But I will say, as it relates to this Warriors, we might see this elongate itself to where it is like, okay, guys, this is... This is beyond over. At least with the Patriots, it was a hard and fast cut. Brady was gone. Belichick soon followed. And now all of a sudden, he's making that attempted heel turn, doing the media, cracking the jokes, making the smiles. So now we're not too far from almost forgetting that it did finish badly with the Patriots, whereas with the Warriors, this thing could drag on and kind of get sad. The Bulls ended with a win, but they all hated each other. That's true. Like that dynasty ended on top, but you're still right. It still ended ugly with them kind of taking shots at each other. The Patriots dynasty was really ugly because it just was year after year of us all convincing ourselves, but if anybody could do it, it could be Bill Belichick. Yeah, true, and then true. again, they had more losses and were sad and embarrassing themselves. But uh, with the Warriors, it does feel like they were never supposed to be a dynasty in a way that uh, – normally happens in the NBA is like a superstar comes in and then a dynasty is constructed around this particular player. (laughs) This team didn't have that. They were playing differently and people didn't even believe that this style of play could work. They Steph wasn't even the first at his position drafted. Then he had the injuries. Like it was a fun ride. They went from being the most unlikely success story to adding Kevin Durant and being the most like dominant team that we may have ever seen in basketball history to then being the team that like surprisingly stole another championship. So like, I I get it. It's painful to see it for them to fall apart, but y'all really shouldn't have never had none of this. Just be grateful. There you go. (laughs) Just sit down and be grateful. You'll take it and you'll like it. That's what I say to my kids every single day when they fight me on the food, you know, it beats the alternative, which is nothing. So sit there. Oh, you want sleep for dinner again? Uh, What? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) What do you want to eat this air again? (laughs) Um, All right, on the other side, the truth translator, as we say, thank you and farewell to our friend, Dom Foxworth. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Make sure to check out the Dominic Foxworth show wherever you get your podcast. It really is fantastic. Him and Charlie put on a great, great production, Um, and so make sure to check that out. And, Fox, you uh, you can't quit us now. You're a member of the team. We're going to call you all the time, and we appreciate your insight and just really elevating just Correct. elevating the level and of the color coding on this show. Yeah. All of our shirts. We should try. Yeah. It's not planned. We're bringing I'm all thinking, the tan I'm, and maroon. Chartreuse. I'm thinking, I'm thinking collaboration at some point. <gasps> like we got to we got to do some sort of collaboration at some point. So, I'm thinking, I don't know. We we might do the friend draft episode. That could Hell be Hell yes. And Let's do that. We have a collaboration it's like our team versus your team. We draft yes. friends. Yes. I like I'm going right, to trade you Gary. I'm going to trade you Gary Streisky. <laughs> you don't that. have to give me return either all right i'm gonna get top dollar (laughs) fox (laughs) thanks all right bye guys and we back horn 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 
there's like this rando radio station, as we say, welcome back to the L. Duncan Show in Hartford. Um, it's the Jamaican radio station. And it's just like a dude. An introduction. Yeah, he just sort of talks. Uh-huh. And then he plays music in the background while he talks over the whole song. Oh. But it's just air horns the whole time. It's incredible. That's the music in the background? Just it's I don't really know what it is. It's just like this meld of him talking uh-huh. with some great beats behind him mm-hmm. and just a copious amount of air horns. Just whenever big up bow, 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 just the whole time. Well, the radio station can't be too bad if it keeps your attention. It really does. For a little bit of time. I love it. Okay. I'm like this. So guy. they have a listener. Yeah. Keep doing your thing, Hartford Jamaica station. <laughs> We love you. Um, we also love the Truth Translator. It's yes. That we have trotted out quite a few times here on the Correct. Duncan Show. This is the NBA play-in edition of yep. the Truth Translator. We basically play you some sound, and then we say whether what we think that they're really saying. We read sure. between the lines Let's here. Let's do that. So that's what we do. Let's uh-huh. start with Lakers head coach Darvin Ham oh. following everyone being like, before they had their playing game with the Pelicans, do the Lakers really want to win this game? Do they really want to play the Nuggets? Y'all don't want it with the Nuggets? No, the defending you, champs? Would you rather lose and then take your chances and try to play OKC? I'm saying. Well, they didn't. They ended up winning the game because I thought that whole notion was moronic You anyway. thought it was silly when I proposed the thought to you. That was really stupid yeah. and dumb. And it, apparently Darvin Ham feels the same way. Listen. Zero now. Back to zero and zero. We with all the smoke and we ain't ducking no fades. He's such an OG. Every time Darvin Ham opens his mouth, I'm I can't like, look at him without being like, "That's Debo." What yeah, ta- like Debo really yeah. came up. You're at 100. percent Really came up, living his best life. We ain't Man. ducking no fades. What do you think that he's saying here? Well, I think there's nothing to read between the lines. I mean, what he said is exactly what he meant. We are back to zero zero. We are back to having a zero point zero percent chance. <laughs> 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 There's nothing to read between the lines here. He said we are back to zero zero, as in a zero point zero percent chance of getting out of this next round of the NBA playoffs because we are about to play a Denver Nuggets team that we haven't beat in the regular season. A Denver Nuggets team that just by the way of happenstance is the two seed in the West, but they by all accounts look better and more willing than they did last year. When they did what L? When they won. The NBA championship. Yeah, so and swept the Lakers. He said, in the "We want all the smoke, which of course they want it all. And guess what? They're gonna get it all. And we ain't ducking no fades, which means they are willing to take this punch straight in the mouth, which L is about <laughs> is about to happen. There's nothing to translate here. He was just saying what was about to happen. All right, let's play devil's advocate because yes, you on, on the surface, the Nuggets have beat the Lakers eight straight times. Uh huh. Uh-huh. That also includes, of course, sweeping them last year uh-huh. in the conference finals." So you're going to try to find a silver lining. I am. Uh, Here's the silver line if you're Darvin Ham, right? Okay. The Lakers, yes, got swept, but three of the four of those games, they only lost by six points. The other part of that is that, yes, Jamal Murray was eating. I think, uh-huh. what did he I have his line there? He averaged 32 and a half points, over six boards, over five dimes, and almost three steals mm-hmm. during that sweep. He was mm-hmm. great. And then, of course, there's Jokic, and they have literally no matchup for Jokic. They can't stop him. But last year, the person that really put the Lakers down was Michael Porter Jr. Uh-huh. And if you're Darvin Ham, you're saying, last year we were coming into this series playing the Nuggets, having had two tough series previously with what the Grizzlies and the Warriors, right? We were uh-huh. tired. I was tired, boss. Now you're getting them as fresh as you're going to get them. You got okay. three days rest after the play-in. Uh-huh. So, like, this is your best shot of being, I'm not convincing uh-huh. you at all. Uh-huh. Is this no, convincing no, please, you? No, please okay. keep going. Yeah, no, so. I'm okay. just saying, they didn't get boat raced. They didn't win a game in the series. And it does look bleak, but it's not impossible 0.0? because <laughs> there's a chance. There is a 0.0% chance that the Warriors are going to play anybody else kind because they are out of the postseason. And many people are wondering, is this it? Is the dynasty over? Clay uh-huh. Thompson is an impending free agent. And Steph Curry had some thoughts about keeping the big three together. Listen. I can never see myself, you know, not with those two guys. It's, I understand this league changes and there's so many things that go into it and we're not going to play forever, but... You know, we've uh, experienced so much together. And at the end of the day, like, again, I know they want to win. I know I want to win. And that's all, I wor- that's, all I'm, uh, that's all I'm worried about. I don't know if this applies to anybody else, L, but it truly feels to me like we blinked. We blunked. We blunk? We blinked it? We blinked. <laughs> we blanked. We bl- hey. 
Uh, we blinked, and the blink was so long. We I, had blanked. On one side of the blink, this was the dynasty. Yeah. On the other side of the blink, we're talking about, wait, Steph's 30 what? Draymond's what? Clay can't but walk anymore, a la Tiger Woods. Like, it felt like that was such a long time ago, but not really when these guys were running up and down the court. I mean, it hasn't been too many years since they were NBA champs. I don't know. This feels to me like uh, – not to get too morbid, but a couple of old heads realizing their mortality, right? Like, listen, man, we had a good life. We got in some hijinks. I'm tired. Let me retire. But I want to retire around the people who I'm closest with, who I'm comfortable with. Yeah, I know we're on the other side. It sounds like settling. You, you yeah, just you know settle. what I'm saying? I just feel like they realize, you know what, this is mortality, and we're cool. Like, let me ride off in the sunset with the homies. Yeah. Cheaper to be, keep her. I don't want to be alone. That's good. I actually think this whole thing's gotten really sad. We didn't play the Clay sound. Yesterday we played the Clay Thompson the Clay sound, sound. Yeah. on Sports Center. And I was like, this is yeah. s- getting uncomfortable. It's like sad. Yeah. It's like he's just like, I can still play. I can still be valued. It's like really sad that it's come to this. Well, but this is what that happens. that self-actualization for the last couple of months yeah. now. Like he's one of the players who he doesn't sugarcoat anything. And he'll tell you exactly how he feels, what his body is going through. And I actually appreciate that out of him. I keep hearing from people inside the NBA that they're like, you think it's a foregone conclusion that this thing's going to break up because it's clearly not working. I mean, it's the second straight year that you're in the plan. And I understand a handful of years ago, they were winning an, an NBA championship. Yeah. Um, although a lot of that had to do with Andrew Wiggins. I'm yeah. not really sure he's played that well since that NBA championship. But um, it just feels like I understand like the the feelings and the want. It's really hard to let things go and to Correct. move on, especially with dynasties, especially when you have been so successful as the big three. Um, but it, you also have to ask yourself, as the ultra competitors, is this working? And sure. the three of you uh, solely and alone, it's just like it's not it's not working. Anymore. Yes. So yes, you can give him sort of one of those honorary, thank you for being here, team friendly type of deals and keep mm-hmm. this thing together. But for what? So you can be another plan. You know, team. Correct. And then if you're Steph, you're asking yourself, do I want to be part of a rebuild? I don't know. There's a lot, there's a lot to unpack. Good thing is they've got a whole off season to unpack it. Even Clay was like, Can I just can you just let the body get a little cold before you're asking me? But he's like, I have until June or something to decide. Can you leave me alone? Now let me get in my canoe and paddle back to my home. I need the extra time. My body's ailing. On the other side, we'll talk a little Team USA because the roster on the men's side has been announced. I'm honestly, yeah. I'm much more intrigued on what's happening on the women's side, but we'll build our own super <laughs> team when the L. Duncan show I returns. Like how Steph's like, peace out, bums. I'm going to some winners. <laughs> hey, you better tell somebody about the L. Duncan show. New episode. Like right. Every Mondays and Thursdays, I'll find you. You can listen on Spotify, you can watch on YouTube, and then, of course, every Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. All right, we've got the Team USA men's basketball roster being announced because we are in an Olympic year, baby. Usual suspects, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant. All the old heads. Oh, let's go, Anthony Edwards. I needed this one. Yeah, he's going to cause some international incidents. 100%. I love it. You don't get banned from France, then you didn't do it right. Uh-huh. The other Anthony, Davis, Tyrese Halliburton, Devin Booker, Joel Embiid. I That's love my a weird country. One. Well, no, I love my country, but you know, I want to play in the Olympics. Dual citizenship, we got you. Jason Tatum, Mines. Drew Holiday, Bam Adebayo, and Kawhi Leonard. Nope. Anybody that you're adding to this list? I mean, I think this is a pretty this is a pretty solid list here. It's a style list, and I think the Joel Embiid one is kind of funny because if you read between the lines and him saying, oh, my son was born in America. I've obviously lived here yeah. for so long. I love my country in Cameroon, mm-hmm. and he could also play for the French national team. Sure. I love my country, but I really wanted to play in the Olympics. Yeah. He's basically saying, because Cameroon hasn't qualified yet, he's yeah. like, I love him, but I don't think they're going to be here. So let me Playing suit up. Gucci song let ahead. me suit up for the red, white, and blue. Yeah. So I know I'm going to be here. So I thought that was kind of. And listen, man, if he's healthy, awesome. Yeah. You know, we're going to be rolling up there with a bunch of stifle towers, right? But uh, as far as snubs, I mean, we are in that same age bracket of the KDs, Stephs, and LeBrons. I would have loved to see a little bit more interjection of youth. Ty- Tyrese Maxey. Jalen Brunson having an MVP year. Yeah. He put in New York City on his back. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you think? I would have added SGA. SG- Canadian. Oh, yeah. Canadian. Damn it, Canada. Canadian. Yeah, way to ruin it again, you Canada. I know. You know what? Let's just throw that out the window real fast. What about Trey Young? Say, um, 
<laughs> Damn. I, I don't. I, I mean, listen, I'm a Hawks fan, obviously. Please I like expand. You know, I'm just saying, I don't know. What is he giving you? That people on are in here. Yeah, you ain't lying. You, uh, you yeah. know what I mean? Like maybe Dame Lillard, if you're looking for someone to just for Ooh. someone's range. Yeah, you know, you could have put Dame Doll in there. No defense, though. Yeah, I was gonna, gonna say no he, he, he might opt to stay in Trey, Paris. Well, I was gonna say Trey Young's worst defense. So you know, <laughs> a lot of these players are good offensive players, and also you got to play some defense. I don't even know if it's like. That's why Drew Holiday's there. I know, <laughs> correct. <laughs> and Anthony Davis, yeah, <laughs> and, that's, all, and that's it. All defensive team. Um, it feels like, especially though, like for the Olympics, I, I get it. Like you want to represent your country. I grew up playing softball. It was my dream to play on the U.S. Olympic softball team. I wasn't good enough to do that. But it also feels like it's a little bit thankless, like especially in the basketball space. Like, bruh, there is no other thing other than gold. Like, there is no, sure. like, you can do this. It's literally like, oh, you're going to do this, or you're a national Embarrassing. Well, and we had we are old enough to live through that 2004 Greece when yeah. was it bronze or they didn't even medal. Yeah, but then now they've rattled off five straight golds. Mm -hmm. My math is wrong there because it's every four years, so definitely not. But have been that. anyway, they've they've rattled off consecutive it, golds. Yeah. So the redeemed team is certainly. Yeah, it was back. 2004 when they did not get the gold medal, and that was embarrassing. But I'm looking at this list. Does LeBron James, with the Olympics in LA in four years? Yeah. Is he still in the NBA? No. You don't think so in four I years? I think so, no. Okay. I think no. it's something interesting to nibble on. He's like 45 years old. Yeah, but it's a home Olympics. Know. And you know LeBron loves Go him, make him some the LeBron. Coach. Go make him the coach. Chill. Yeah. <laughs> what? The coach. the coach. He could be, you know what? He could be the um, Udonis Haslam of the national team. So we can hear LeBron say after every single game, I ought to have done it better. I don't know these young kids, man. <laughs> That's what he would be as a coach. He would just be throwing shade. He would be Doc Rivers reincarnated. Let us know in the comments section, should yeah. LeBron be on the team in four years and still playing in the NBA, or should he be a player coach? It's a bet. Which feels like a better fit. On the <laughs> other side, we're going to let you know, because someone was just banned for life, yes. doing the thing they love for being a big fat idiot, uh -huh. we're going to run down some uh -huh. other people that should be banned for life based on the stupid decisions they make. I got some juicy, juicy takes. Welcome back to the L. Duncan Show. Featuring oh. Gary Strysky. It was announced this week that guy, John Tay Porter's yeah. banned from the NBA for life mm. for gambling. Uh-oh. I mean, ugh. So we figured that we wanted to list some things that can get you banned for life. But before we do that, he is the brother, of course, of Michael Porter Jr., yeah. NBA champion of the Denver Nuggets. His brother, little Mike, he's like, my brother wouldn't do this. It means so much to him. Of course, you've got to publicly support your brother. But will you financially support your brother? Would you, if that was your brother, be like, hey, you did some <laughs> dumb <laughs> but I got you, brother. I'm going to... He got plenty of bread. Max contract. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook you up, Holmes. Five years, 270 M's. And Jonte's like, parlay time. <laughs> He's like, I got nothing but time, and you're looking healthy. You're playing the Lakers in the playoffs? Oh, let me get this money back. Michael Maybe Porter not. Jr. is like... Jante, why would you push me down the stairs right before the game? What's going on? <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. He's like, shut up. And what's the internet password again? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so who are some other people that should be banned for life for doing stupid Top things? Top of the list, okay. Kel, is the person who doesn't put the buggy away at name your grocery store, Costco, whatever. It is a test of human decency. Yeah. I don't care how far the corral is. That's a planning problem. Okay, park closer if you have a problem walking to it. But the people who just leave their carts in the middle of the parking lot, lifetime ban. Yeah, that does suck. Unless some of those grocery stores don't think out the, the layout very mm, well. Sounds like a built-in excuse that Elle's making. No, I always walk that thing. I'll be yeah. walking back to the front. I do Straight that. up, me too. I am a big believer that anyone that proposes at a sporting event on the Jumbotron oh. should be banned from all sporting events. It's so awkward. Like, we worked for the Red Sox, and inevitably, they'd be like, let's check in on the Green Monster. And there's, <laughs> Why? There's like two people standing there, and all of a sudden, the guy's like, oh, it's my turn. And then he gets down on his knee. Yeah. It's so Awful. Hey, but business is booming because 81 home games at Fenway Park and every single game they have that sold yeah. is what we come to, came to find out, 250 bucks per. Okay. Fenway knows how to make a little bit of money. Okay, what about this? This this irritates me, okay? This is oddly specific. Subway, Chipotle, the person who's on the side ordering and they're like, um, can I get some cheese? Can I get some chicken? Like pointing at the items as if the person who is assembling the meal doesn't know what cheese is. Doesn't know what chicken is. L, are you the person who points? No, I just don't. That's so specific. That literally is only coming from the mouth of someone who spends more time in a Chipotle than no. he does anywhere L, else in the world. No, because the person 
pokes at the glass. That's rude. You know that's rude. You poking on the glass. I think the podcast listeners are like, it's very rude that you're doing that in my ear right now. Well, I just kind of wanted to. I just wanted to show labor the point. The thank you mm-hmm. very much. Thank yes. you. Um, hey, remember, to jail. remember, if you don't want to be rude and if you love our podcast, we want you to subscribe, rate, review it, listen Please. on Amazon Music, wherever you get your podcast. Watch us on TV. Stock Gary and his TikTok comments. It's he loves that. Multi-platform. Yeah, we're, we're everywhere. We really are. But we're right everywhere. now, we are out of here, and we will see you on Monday. Deuces. Please cut the camera. No, I'm like, oh, no. Please, I don't. Doing like this, this I can only do finger guns for so long. You're supposed to catch the snake. Oh, my bad. I didn't know we were. Oh.